Hi, and welcome to this episode of John's Motorcycle Rescue and Review. In today's episode, I am once again with Suzuki's 1981 GS 1100E project. This bike was called the GSX 1100 in Europe and in a lot of other markets. I just completed my first day working on this bike. We have made some nice progress on it. I really start at the front axle of the bike and work my way back through and make sure that my braking systems are up to snuff, my electrical system, the engine and transmission, all of the systems on the bike have to be functioning properly for it to be safe out on the road. And this is critically important on these classic bikes. If you're like me and you like classic bikes from the 1970s and 1980s, please like and subscribe. I feature lots of great classic bike content on this channel. I've gone through the front brakes at this point. I have put all new brake fluid in. I have made sure everything in there was cleaned and lubricated. Although the brake pads on the bike look to be just about new, they were gummed up with grease or fork oil or something. And so I went on a very short test drive, but they were very, very mushy. They did not grab. And so I have come back. I have gone through the process of cleaning the pads and then scuffing them in again. I've also gone through the process of cleaning and lubing the caliper sliders on this bike. And with the steel braided lines on this bike, these brakes should now be up to spec, up to snuff, and working very well, even better than they did in stock form. Looking over the bike, I have noticed a couple of deviations from stock. Initially, I noticed that the handlebar on this was not the stock bar. It's more of a lower bar, a European style bar. So I'm actually happy about the lower bar. It's much more comfortable for me. This bike also has these steel braided brake lines front and back. That's an awesome upgrade. I do that to all my classic bikes. This bike also has an APE manual cam chain adjuster on it. I run that on many of my Suzuki's. I like those and I'm happy about that. That's a, a quality upgrade. This bike also has almost new Avon tires on it, front and back. I'm very excited about that. It's always good to have newer tires on the classic bikes. These tires are in good shape. I've inspected them from dry rot. They don't look dried out. They look to be in great condition. One thing I noticed on this bike going through it was it has the 530 chain conversion with a newer 530 chain and sprockets. That's a real performance upgrade and I'm very happy about that. It helps the bike accelerate quicker and the newer 530 chains are much better quality than the old big 630 chains that they used to run on the chain drive bikes. One thing I noticed when I was initially looking at the bike was the charging system was not charging properly. It was only making a maximum of 12.49 volts when the headlight was on. Looking more closely at that, there was a headlight on off switch that had been integrated into the headlight housing that was not stock. And what I found was the switch itself must have had some resistance in it because when I pulled that out of the system and just reconnected the headlight so that it would be on when the key is on, the charging voltage went back up into the normal range. So I will keep an eye on that. I'm gonna test this after I run the bike for a distance and it's good and hot. I'll make sure that the charging system is charging as it should. But so far, it looks like the switch itself might have been the charging issue. Another thing I noticed going through the bike is on the panel here that has a little diagram of the bike, it has a battery light. What that relates to, there was an electrolyte lead that went down into the original stock battery that told you when the battery health was trailing off. Newer batteries don't have a port for that lead, and so when you pull that out of the battery, it shows a battery light on the dash. So I have to track down that lead, I have to get in here and look at that and I'm going to connect that lead to a positive so it's seeing the voltage that it should. Once the lead sees the voltage that it should, it will no longer display the battery light on the dash. Cosmetically, I need to go and have some paint mixed up that matches this blue color. There are a couple of stone chips on the tank that I will touch up and address. The rear shocks also have a little bit of surface rust, but I think those will clean up almost perfectly with a little bit of WD-40 and some very, very fine steel wool. Also in the cosmetics department, there is a trim piece that goes along the bottom of the seat. It's polished aluminum. On this particular bike, the one that was on the seat was kind of scratched up and boogered up. So I have removed it. I am looking for a replacement for that. I haven't tracked that down yet, but I will keep you informed on the solution I find for that. As I was running the bike in the driveway to test the charging system, 
I noticed that a significant amount of oil was leaking out of the valve cover gasket. So that definitely needs to be replaced. It's a great excuse to go in and check all of my valve clearances and make sure that those are all within spec. So I will do that at the same time I replace that valve cover gasket. The good news is when I did get to take this bike on a short, probably three mile test drive, everything seemed to function properly. The bike ran as it should. It wasn't coughing or sputtering. It ran nicely. The engine pulled nicely. It shifted through the gears nicely. And other than the mushy front brakes, I didn't really notice any areas of major concern as I was riding the bike. That's always a great sign. I'm really looking forward to having this thing dialed in just a little bit more so I'm sure that it's safe to take out on the road. I can't wait to do some review videos of this bike and comparison videos. Another thing I did to the cosmetics of the bike was I pulled the emblems off the bike and I have repainted the black around those on both emblems. I have straightened this emblem out. It was bent significantly when I bought the bike. I also touched up the paint on the brake master cylinder while I was bleeding the brakes and working on those. That looks much better. And I will continue to go through the bike. I will touch up any areas that have a little bit of corrosion on them and I'll make them look nice. The exhaust, I need to go through and really polish that out and clean that out. It has some discoloration on the head pipes that really won't come out. But overall, I think this bike is gonna clean up really, really nicely. It's gonna be a tremendously nice bike to ride. I will continue to address cosmetic issues as I go through and I make sure that the bike is safe to be out on the road. But for me, functionality takes precedence over cosmetics on my classic bikes. I'll make them pretty but they'll be functional first. All right, I hope you found this video entertaining and informative, and until next time, enjoy the ride.